So I'm going to talk about how William maintains control. Uh, once he's he's victorious at the Battle of Hastings, he's got perhaps five, seven, ten thousand Normans with him. Um, he's in a foreign country uh, with a population of over a million, probably. Um, how is he going to maintain control of that? I mean, it's a long way from winning the Battle of Hastings to being the King of England. So how does he do it? How does he maintain control? How does he deal with opposition to his rule? Um, the short answer is quite brilliantly. Um, this is really perhaps the, the great genius of, of William is his ability to um, adapt uh, and utilize the existing structure, um, but also leave people in no doubt that it is now thoroughly a conquered country, that um, there has been a conquest. Uh, there's, there's, there's no question of this. Um, how he goes about it, he does it in a variety of ways. Uh, I think probably the first thing we have to mention is, of course, castles. Um, this question will, will, has, has come up before um, on, the, on, on the paper. Uh, castles, the most important reason for uh, William dealing with opposition to his rule. How far do you agree? And this sort of underlines the the importance of castles. And they're important for a number of reasons. Um, first and foremost, these are these formidable military structures. So uh, even with far fewer uh, Normans than than potential Saxon adversaries, um, with a castle you're you're able to defend a, a large area. Um, you can't people if you if you were planning to say invade London, uh, you can't go around the castles and leave them behind you because the castles are garrison. This key word here, garrison, they're soldiers in the castle. So if you just ignore them and go past, then you can get trapped with people coming at you from behind. Um, so it leaves you with the attempt of, of trying to lay siege to a castle. This is this is very difficult. These are enormous stone structures. I mean for. You have to really, if I mean, go go to, to go to Rochester or go go to one of the the castles, go to the, to the White Keep at the Tower of London, and put your hands in it and have to have a think about actually what it would mean to assault one of these castles. We we talk about it quite flippantly, I think, but the reality of actually attempting to to attack and assault one of these castles is is brutal. Um, very very difficult basically if you're going to attack a castle you have to to lay siege and, and wait the people out um so castles very important as, as these strategic points um but it's more than that they are also uh, psychologically dominating um there's very much here we've got william using or demonstrating this difference between the rulers and the ruled we're in charge you you live in in your little huts, in your villages, in your in your small houses, we live in enormous uh, stone castles. Um, moreover, we're going to demolish part of your village, and you're going to build it for us. You're going to build this huge stone castle for me to live in and to press you. I mean, there's a real psychological element here as well. So we've got already here two sort of separate. Um, methods of control in, employed by William so so, so efficiently um, military and psychological um, going back to, to the, the military control this is sort of also very very clear in terms of um, the replacement of, of the elite so of course the Saxon elite not all of them not all of them particularly not the northern earls but a lot, the, the the southerns the, the, the saxons from the south certainly have been decimated at, at hastings um these men are replaced with normans and so by the end of of william's reign uh doomsday book the doomsday survey reveals that it's it's norman the normans are in power they are the great landholders um not just in terms of earldoms, but also um, in terms of the church as well. Um, so we have this, how else does he maintain control? He does it by replacing. He replaces the, the Saxons with, with his own loyal Normans. Um, this is perhaps what Edward the Confessor was, was attempting to achieve during his reign. William is far more successful than Edward in, in, in achieving this. There, there's no question about this. Connected with this, with the, the personnel there, and connected with, with the building of, of castles, is the great building and, and the, the revitalization of, of the church. So through 
Lan Flank, who is enforcing the, the papal reform movement in terms of the Cluniac reforms of this, the great uh, reforms of the monasteries. This really begins also in, in William's reign. So we have these enormous uh, Romanesque churches uh, start, start to appear. Of course, uh, Westminster Abbey is, is the first great Romanesque building um, during the reign of Edward, but um, William advances on this. And of course, he builds Battle Abbey, of course, it is, it's built uh, to do penance at the site of, of, of his great victory, but also, of course, his his great sin. His thousands of people have been killed here. So, uh, yeah, he's a little bit, I think, certainly according to Derek Vitalis, uh, William is, is, is certainly worried about what's going to happen to him when he shuffles off this model coil. And this building of uh, Battle Abbey and this revitalization of, of of the uh, Saxon Church is is another important method of, of maintaining control. It, it legitimizes his conquest again. It puts him in contact with, with with the papacy. So he's able. I mean, this is difficult time, as as you know, for rulers in terms of the, their relationship with with the papacy. But William manages this very very well. I think um, he manages to get what he needs from the papacy without really making too much. Or too many con concessions here. So we've got um, the church, reforming of the church, um, the cleaning up of clerical abuses. We've got a Norman Archbishop of Canterbury and other important uh, Norman bishops. Uh, Lanfranc, of course, I'm talking about there. We've got um, Romanesque architecture in terms of the churches, also in terms of the castles. We've got important officials. Um, and then we go on to really um, other methods of control. And this is going to be connected to the, ne the next video, which is which I'll be talking about changes to government. Um, but we also need to think about some significant changes he, he makes uh, to government, which have specifically to do with keeping control. Um, firstly, there's the more visible showing of power. So crown wearings um, and being anointed with the holy oil. So this is already occurring under Edward but uh, and the Saxon kings, but William makes it far more, far more regular and far more visible. It's, here I am, I'm the king, I'm in control. Um, God has ordained me. Behold, behold your king, behold your Norman king. Um, difficult, I mean, I'm, you know, we can't put our our minds really we can't empathize what it was like to, to live in the middle ages but we, we can imagine that this is impressive that this is an, an an impressive thing upon the let's say perhaps poorly educated um uh, amongst amongst the saxon peasantry uh, and and nobility this is a real show of power um and this demonstrating power in itself is 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 you know it gives power this is enough isn't it just to demonstrate this. Um, so crown wearing has become very important. Um, he also makes specific changes to the law, uh, which are specifically to enforce Norman rule. Um, interestingly, we have trial by battle. Uh, trial by battle is introduced. Uh, this We can talk about this reflecting the more militaristic nature of, uh, of Norman, of the uh, the Norman nobility, uh, as opposed to the, to the Saxon. And of course, trial by battle is, is, at this stage, this is for the sophisticated Normans. This is how they solve their claims. The Saxons are still suffering through trial by ordeal. I talked about when I, I spoke about the Saxon state previously. Um, we also get the two laws that, for some reason, these always stick in students' mind. I'm never really sure, sure why, but the, the forest law. Um, so this is to do, again, similar to the building of castles, we get enormous villages, enormous areas, farming areas cleared. These are cleared by the Saxons. Forests are planted. Um, the new forest is planted. Sherwood forest is expanded. All of these these great areas. And it's, it's for royal hunting. Um, if you are caught on this land, um, if you're building on this land, if you are hunting on this land and you're a Saxon and you don't have the, uh, the permission of... of, of the nobility of, of the, the Normans in charge, then you're going to, you're going to be fine for this. Um, and this is tied up here again. This this separation. You're different to we are. There's different rules for you and I. Um, not only that, it's going to cost you. It's going to bring money into me. And then of course there is the murder and fine. This is so. 
people tend to sort of think about the merge and find the forest law together at, the, at this stage. And so we have the merge and find, and this is specifically if a Norman is found dead, um, it's going to be the Saxons' fault, isn't it? Um, so the Saxons are to blame. And if the Saxons, uh, if the village, if the hundred is unable to uh, bring out the uh, the guilty party, then the the whole hundred is going to be punished. It's going to be making money once again. It's increasing this division between the Normans and the Saxons. There's a different set of rules for you than there are for me. Um, so this is how he's doing it. Um, I mean, I'll talk about the rebellions themselves and sort of specifics of how he deals with those. I mean, military, diplomacy, paying them off, all this. We, we, we know about all these, these specifics. But generally, how does this man with... You know, not a huge number of, of loyal followers. How does he control a country the size of England? It's through careful building, careful planning. Um, it's through bringing in a much more militaristic style of law. And it's by this psychological separation. Um, you want to be ruled. We're in charge now. Let's make this easier for you. We're in charge. You need to do what we say. And there's these rules in place that are going to make it easier for you to understand that I'm in charge. Um, and it's it's one of those things that's worth thinking about, isn't it? It's, it's astonishing what he does. It's absolutely astonishing uh, what William achieves, um, if we just stop for a moment and think about it. So how does William deal with opposition to his rule? Very well. Okay. <laughs>